This is Did You Know? CIUS Answers, a response to your questions about Russia's war against Ukraine. In response to the strong public interest to understand what is happening in Ukraine right now, CIUS experts are answering your questions. With us today is Dr. Lydia Sibilus, Research Associate at the University of Alberta, primary specialty in Russian Ukrainian Jewish history, currently working at the Peter Yatsik Center with the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies. Larissa, my question for you today, is there a genocide of the Russian people in Ukraine? The simple answer is no. There is no genocide of the Russian people in Ukraine. On February 24, 2022, the same day when Russia invaded Ukraine, Vladimir Putin has been telling Russians that the objective of his war in Ukraine is, I quote, to protect people who have been subjected to bullying and genocide for the last eight years. And for this, we will strive for the demilitarization and the nazification of Ukraine, end of quote. He claims Kyiv has been carrying out a genocide against the Russian-speaking population of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, collectively known as the Donbass, where the Ukrainian army has been fighting in Russian troops since 2014. The war that erupted after the pro-Russian forces seized parts of the Donbass and the South declared the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics killed about 14,000 people, including soldiers, civilians, and uh, Russian-backed fighters. Already in 2015, Putin made a remark. It smells of genocide. Also, a ceasefire was signed in the Belarusian capital of Minsk at the end of 2014. The war in the region continued until Moscow launched its so-called peacekeeping operation in February of this year to stop genocide of the Russian-speaking population in the Donbass region. The term genocide was coined by Polish Jewish lawyer Rafael Lemkin in the 1940s who lobbied the United Nations to recognize it uh, as a crime in 1948. According to the United Nations, genocide is, I quote, acts committed with intent to destroy in whole in, or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group as such, end of quote. This encompasses not only mass murder, but the destruction of their way of life separating children from parents and raising them separately, and stopping new members of the group from being born. Since genocide is seen as an exceptionally odious crime, particularly after the Holocaust, it is a very powerful charge. On February 16, the investigative committee of the Russian Federation opened a criminal case over four mass graves discovered in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, pledging to investigate whether what happened in the area was a genocide. Anatoly Antonov, a Russian ambassador to the United States, wrote on Facebook, I quote, how else can one interpret the shelling of residential areas by Ukrainian armed forces using multiple rocket launchers or the discovered mass grave sites of almost 300 civilians near Luhansk who were killed only because they considered Russian as their native language, end of quote. The ambassador was also accusing Washington of supporting genocide in Donbass. Of course, it was an open propaganda and American uh, officials brushed off such claims. Suddenly, both the Ukrainians and the and pro-Russian forces are responsible for damage and deaths or injuries from firing, but it doesn't mean that the Ukrainian government was planning to wipe out a peaceful population. Genocide is committed with the intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. And context is very important here. The married deaths during an armed confrontation cannot constitute genocide, especially considering that Ukraine did not even control the territory in question since 2015. How would the state perpetrate a genocide on the territories it doesn't even have access to? There is no doubt that the civilians on either side have suffered. But the Russian officials 
has no proof that casualties among civilian population were a part of an organized campaign to exterminate Russian speakers. If Russia had the proof of genocide taking place, why did it not formally bring its claims before the United Nations? As Alexander Hinton, uh, director of the Center for the Study of Genocide and Human Rights at Rutgers University, fairly noticed, accusing Ukraine of genocide, Russia should have presented evidences and pressed for action at the United Nations. Regime change is one of Putin's explicit aims in Ukraine. As he calls uh, on the military to overthrow President Volodymyr Zelensky, Putin has been repeating this genocide myth for several years, but nobody has listened to this until now. Uh, the whole idea is a fiction uh, that is used to, by Putin to justify and to mask his war of aggression on Ukraine. Additionally, this is a part of a long-running attempt to delegitimize Ukraine. Putin is trying also to dehumanize the Ukrainians before destroying them. The consequence of the Russian aggression in Ukraine is cities under siege, civilians under fire, a humanitarian catastrophe and people fleeing for their lives. At this moment, uh, it's more appropriate to talk about the genocide of the Ukrainian population planned by Putin, who refused to accept Ukraine as an independent state and the Ukrainian people as a separate nation. Thank you, Larissa. Please keep sending us your questions. We'll be back with more answers.